My name's Helen Lackman and I'm one of the consultants at the UK National Amyloidosis Centre at the Royal Free Hospital in London. Um, we're a university centre and we are the only centre in the country for amyloidosis and we're the national treatment centre for CAPS and the biggest centre in the world really with a specialist interest in treating systemic auto-inflammatory diseases. And we look after patients with a variety of diseases which are due to overactivity of the half of the immune system called innate immunity and which results in diseases causing recurrent attacks of fever, often with rash, joint pains, pains elsewhere in the body and general feelings of severe flu-like unwellness. So the diagnostic journey in these diseases can be very difficult and very long. It relies on somebody getting suspicious because there are now very good genetic testing, uh, but somebody's got to think to ask, should we be doing the genetic testing? Should be we be asking the expert centres? So in fact, I can't be too smug about the diagnosis because by the time someone comes to our clinic, they're asking, is this what the problem is? And the recognition is much more done uh, in generally in hospitals, but with perhaps rheumatologists or paediatricians or dermatologists thinking, am I seeing this? Often for the first time in their lives. So diagnosis is extremely difficult. We know that most patients come with really very distressing stories about having been ill for a very long time, often had it brushed off. Um, now seems to take probably two to five years on average to make a diagnosis. Our historical data suggests most people will have had at least five wrong diagnoses before the right diagnosis is made. So for patients when they refer, are referred to uh, the National Amyloidosis Centre, they will be diagnosed by having a blood test here where we're able to look at their genetic testing. We also look at their inflammation markers mainly things like SAA levels and CRP, also the symptoms they're presenting as well. So some of the symptoms such as headache, muscle aches, joint pain, mouth ulcers and fatigue. I think the importance of rare diseases is, is multiple. One is if you put them all together, rare diseases aren't that rare because many, many people have a rare disease. So this affects large numbers of people. The other thing is that some of the rare diseases, and this includes the ones I'm interested in, if they're due to a single genetic lesion, we can make a diagnosis. They're very informative about what goes wrong in human health, can be very helpful in developing treatments for commoner diseases, but they're also often much more targetable than the common diseases of aging. So they are a real potential to treat. We're often picking up young people, and if we can change their life course and change their disease prognosis, you can transform someone from having a really very miserable health experience into having what is only really routine health follow-up.